hi guys welcome to this section in today's video i want to be showing you the step by step of checking for deflection in slab and beams using Eroco 2 which is the design of concrete structure part one of one there are two basic methods to check for deflection according to the Euro code. the first method is the basic span to effective depth ratio and this is what we're covering in this section in this video the second method is calculating the actual deflection and comparing it to the limiting value this will be discussed in one of our video in the future if this is your first time on this channel kindly hit the subscribe button and make sure you turn off the notification for those of us that have been, that have already subscribed to the channel we really love you and we appreciate your subscription so let's dive into the video so the first step to check for deflection is to determine factor k factor k take account of the type of structural system we are considering so we have this is presented in euro code as table 7.4 n so this table actually have four columns and each of the four columns you have the structural system you have k so to get your k it depends on the type of uh element you are designing for example if you look at the second row you have for simply supported beams or for one way spanning simply supported slab your k value is one then if you are designing for flat slabs your k value is 1.2 if you are the time designing or if you want to check for deflection for cantilever slabs or for cantilever beams your k value is 0.4 so this table works perfectly for either beams or slabs so once factor k is determined so we now move to the second step step two of checking for deflection is to determine the row so this row is actually in two form you have the row and the row prime the row is given by the formula 100 as provided over bd so row is the required tension reinforcement at the mid span that caters for the design load so when your beam or your slab requires only tension reinforcement you use row but when your beam or your slab requires compression reinforcement then you use row prime so it's just the same formula the different there is for row this as provided is going to be the required area for your tension reinforcement while the row prime is going to be the required area for your compression reinforcement the b is just the breadth of the section for example if your beam is 225 by 1.2 meters so the 225 there is going to be the breadth while the d is the effective depth so this is already defined in the code so this is the second step that you need to get to to check for deflection the third step to check for deflection is to determine your basic span effective depth ratio so this is also can be obtained from table 7.4n where we obtain our k so the reason why we go through the second step is so as to be able to determine our basic effective ratio let's say for example you are designing for a simply supported beam your k value is one then uh, then this is where your row come to play so the row that you determine in the second step is this is where you now use it so it, let's assume after calculating for your row using 100 as provided over bd you get something like 15 and you know you are designing for a simply supported beam that means your your row is less than 1.5 this column is for row equals to 1.5 and this column is for row equals to 0.5 so if your row falls between 1.5 and 0.5 you can use a linear interpolation between these two value 
let's say for example you are using simply supported beam or one way two way spanning simply supported slab you can interpolate between 15 and 20. so anything that you got is going to be your basic span effective depth ratio this is just like the normal basic span effective depth ratio that we calculate using a bs8110 so that is your step three the step four which is the next step after the basic span effective depth ratio in checking for deflection is to determine your modification factors in Euro code, you have three basic modification factor. So the first modification factor is the flange modification. That is when you are designing or when you are checking for deflection for a flange section. This is when your modification factor comes into play. So if your if this ratio, the ratio of your flange the width the, the breadth of your flange divided by the rib of your flange the breadth of your flange if it is greater than three then you take your flange modification factor as one but if not if it is less than or equals to three you take it as one if it is greater than three you take it as 0.8 so that is the flange modification factor then what do you now mean by the bf and the bw this applies only to flange beams then you can also use it for rib slabs and waffle slabs so you know in this case this type of slabs they have flanges and they have ribs so your flanges b flange can bf can be defined for a beam this is for a beam for a beam the width of your flanges is defined as you can see in the picture this is for t beams and the second one in this picture is for l beams and this is a rectangular beam in a rectangular beam there is nothing like flanges and ribs so in this case your ribs is going to be your bw while for your flanges is going to be your bf so when you find the ratio of bf and bw and you have a value greater than three that means your f1 is going to be 0 0.8 but when you have a value less than 3 or equals to 3, that means your F1 is going to be taken as 1. So the next step to check for deflection after you've obtained your modification factor 1 is to determine modification factor 2. Modification factor 2 is also known as the span modification factor. This applies whenever the span of your section of your structural element slab or beam or cantilevers is greater than seven so whenever the span in case of slab we are referring to the short span when the short span of your slab one way slab two way slab or cantilever slab is greater than seven then you need to apply a span modification factor which is referred to as f2 and when it is less than seven you just take your F2 as one. So, but in case of a flat slab, you know, in checking for deflection for a flat slab, you consider a longer span. So for a flat slab, your F2, if it is greater than 0.8.5 meters, that is when you use this second formula. So this second formula in the red cycle is used for flat slab. So when the longer span of a flat slab exceeds 0.5 meters then you apply f equals 0.8 divided by the l effective the l e l e f f is the same is is known as the effective length this is actually defined in the code so that is how to obtain your modification factor 2 then the next step after determining the modification factor 2 is for you to determine the modification factor 3 so this is also known as the st stress factor this is known as the st stress factor so because this modification factor is applied to your reinforcement so this depends on the strength of your reinforcement so the fyk is the FYK here is your characteristic strength of your steel. 
then the asreq is the reinforcement required area of reinforcement required why as provided is the area of reinforcement provided so this will give you your modification factor three so the depending on the type of reinforcement either you are using ie strength steel or you are using mind strength steel then in that kind of situation you need to modify the basic effective span ratio by applying a steel stress modification factor so these are the three modification factors that you need to determine as presented in euro code 2. so the next step after this is for you to determine the modified and the actual span effective depth ratio you know in the fourth in the last six steps we've determined the effective span ratio and the modification factors so you now need to determine the modified modification factor so this is the basic this is the basic span effective depth ratio multiplied by all your modification factors so this is this is going to give you the modified span effective depth ratio then the next one is also to calculate the actual span you know in deflection what you want to do is you want to check if the actual span is does not exceed the limits of deflection the limit of this flexion is span over 250 so when you are using this method this basic span effective depth ratio method it means that you are limiting your your deflection of your in your slab on your beam to span over 250 so that is where this basic span effective depth ratio comes into play but due to differences in the structural arrangement of our members so that is why we apply modification factor f1 f2 and f3 so once you obtain your modified sp span effective depth ratio and you also determine your actual span effective depth ratio the actual span effective depth ratio is the actual span of the member for a slab it is going to be the short span divided by the effective depth of the slab or effective depth of the beam then if it is a beam it's going to be the span of that beam divided by the effective depth of the beam so once you obtain these two the next step is just for you to compare the two values so you need to compare your modified span effective depth ratio to your actual span effective depth ratio so if your modified span effective depth ratio is greater than the actual that means the deflection pass and it is okay there is no need to fear for deflection but if the other way around happens if your modified span to effective depth ratio is less than the actual then there is a failure in deflection so there are two things that you can do whenever deflection fails the first thing is to in increase the area of reinforcement provided assuming that the difference between the two is not much so you can try to increase the provided area of reinforcement but if there is a significant difference between the modified and the actual span effective depth ratio you have no other option than to increase the size of your member if it is a slab you can increase the depth of the slab if it is a beam you can either increase the width or the depth of the beam so these are the eight steps that you need to follow in checking for deflection in slab or in beams in our next section we are going to be looking at a actual solved example to demonstrate all these steps so that you understand it perfectly so if this if you find this video helpful make sure you subscribe and give me a comment in the comment section to let me know what you feel see you in the next one